Praise God. Are you excited to be in God's house today? Yes. Hallelujah. And our pastor has already prayed. And I just want us to lift our hands to Jesus because you didn't come to see me today. You came to see the King of Kings and the King of Glory. Hallelujah. And I want us to, as you're lifting your hands to God, I want that to be an act of surrender that God himself will speak to your heart. That you didn't come on this Sunday morning, Sunday the 15th of October, to go back the same way that you came. You were going back a changed person. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for every raised hand in this place, every person who has raised their hands as an act of surrender. Father, I pray that you will speak to them on an individual basis. Father, these are your children. You know what they need. You know, Father God, what they're going through. And Lord, I am confident that you are able to speak to them, my Father. Lord, I pray that no one is living this place the same way that they came. I thank you, my Father, for your word. I thank you that it is alive and that, Father God, your word is able to do so much in everybody's lives. Father God, and so we commit this time into your hands. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise. It all belongs to Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is so faithful? Like really, really know that he is faithful. He is so faithful. Now, if you've been in church for the last couple of months, you know that uh, Pastor B has been speaking about seasons. And I think God gave her a word many months ago about staying in your season. You remember that? And also, we know that last week was speaking about time, purpose, times and season. And today, I just want to share a word that I believe God wants to speak to each one of you. And this title of the message is actually found in Romans 8, 28. And I'll just read this scripture. It's Romans 8, 28. I'm reading from the NIV. And it says... And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Now, that's me reading. I want you to read it. Why do I want you to read it? Because I want you to understand and believe this for yourself. And we know that in all things, it doesn't say some things. It says, it says, in all things, God works for what? For what? Good of those who love who? Love who? Who have been called according to whose purpose? Hallelujah. So you realize that each one of you has a very distinct calling and a very distinct purpose. God created you. The word says that he knitted you together in your mother's womb. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. You have been created on purpose for a purpose. I said you have been created on purpose for a purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so the title of my message today is... All things are working together for good. And I don't know if you remember this. There's something interesting Mariette shared last week, and she was talking about, and there is more, and there is more. And she was just explaining that with God, there is always more. And today, I want you to understand that if the Word of God is saying that all things are working together for good for those who have been called according to his purpose. This means for you to experience this in every season of your life, then you need to have the right 
perception of God and the right perspective of your circumstance in every single season. Why is that important? I'll just describe this a little bit. Now, to have the right perspective, it's important because if you're going through a situation, if it's a good situation, you're happy. Yeah, if it's a good season, you're happy. But we know in life, you have high seasons and low seasons. And then you have another high season and then another low season. But it's in those difficult times, in those difficult seasons, that's when sometimes it's a little bit difficult to realize that even in this season, is God really working all things together for good? He is. Otherwise, this scripture would have read different. It would have said, and we know that in some things, but he doesn't say some things. He says all things. Tell your neighbor, all things. Tell the one on the other side, all things. Now, why am I saying, say your neighbor, tell your neighbor? It's because if you forget everything that I say today, I want you to leave this place knowing Romans 8.28 is true for you. I didn't write the word of God. God wrote it. And if God said it, then it's final. That is it. All things are working together for your good according to his riches and glory. Hallelujah. Now, when I was growing up um, in my primary school, we did this subject similar to here. We, it's called SRE. We called it CRE. And it stands for Christian Religious Education. And I remember the teacher telling us there are three attributes of God. I said, okay. And the three attributes of God that she described, um, the first one is that he is, he is omnipotent. Omni means all. Omnipotent means he is all-powerful. Say, God is all-powerful. All powerful. The second attribute that she explained was his omniscient, which means he is all knowing. He sees everything, which means in your season, be it a high season or a low season, guess what? God knows about it. He's not sitting in heaven thinking, oh my God, I forgot about this. Look at what Fred is going about. No, 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 no. He knows all things. He's omniscient. Amen. So what was the first attribute? He is all powerful and all. Mm -hmm. Then we have the third one. The teacher told us that he is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. He sees you when you're happy. He sees you when you're sad. He sees you when you're crying. He sees everything. When people are against you, he sees it. He sees everything. There is nothing hidden from our God. And if you can have the right perception and the right perspective of God, guess what? You will be able to go through every season knowing that he is well able to take you through that season and it's working together for your good. Amen? Now, in my line of work, I often look at a lot of resumes. And when I'm given a resume, I can go through that resume and I can tell if this person, yes, they can do this job or maybe no, they can't do the job based on the resume. Now remember I said it's important to have the right perspective of God. How do we know about God? What is his resume? The word of God. Now, this word of God is so precious. Most people, you just have the one resume. But this Bible, it has 66 books, 37 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. And all the way from Genesis to Revelation, you see book after book after book talking about the power of God or talking about 
He is glorious. He is a faithful God. You see a consistency as you read through the word of God. And if this is the God that you serve, guess what? It doesn't matter what season you're going through because all things are literally working together for good. Amen? Amen? Now, I want us to go through a Bible example of a young man a young man whose life went through these high seasons and the low seasons I'm talking about. And through every single season, God used this young man for the glory and the honor of his name. Amen? Now, let's look at Genesis, if we can put it up on the screen. Genesis chapter 37 and verse 2. Genesis 37 and verse 2. And this story is actually the account of, um, it says this is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Continue. And he says, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made an ornate robe for him. Now, just a little background. Jacob was the father of Joseph. Why did he love Joseph so much? Because Jacob had two wives. He had Leah and he had Rachel. Now, with the Bible tells us that Rachel could not have children, and finally, after many, many years, God opened her womb and she got her firstborn child that was Joseph, and after that, she only had one other son, Benjamin, okay? And so, Joseph was well loved by his father, and so loved was he that he made him an ornate robe. Now, because the other brothers, he had 11 other brothers they were jealous of him, they didn't really like him, they despised him, and Joseph was also a dreamer. God would speak to Joseph several times, and he went, he told his brothers, I dreamt about this, they were bowing and all this, and they weren't happy with him. And so I want us to pick this up in Genesis 39. Genesis 39, verse 2. Okay. And before this chapter, because we can't read all the chapters, I want to explain something very significant. Remember I told you you go through low seasons, you go through high seasons. That's, that's how life is. Yeah, you're not always on this high. But what happened is his father sent him to see, uh, Jacob sent Joseph to see his uh, brothers. His brothers were shepherds. And the Bible says that when they saw Joseph coming, they started to plot. And they started to say, ah, here comes that dreamer. Let's take him. Let's kill him. And Reuben, the firstborn, said, no, 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 no. Let's not kill him. Let's just throw him into this cistern like a pit and his idea was that later on he was going to save his brother and the bible says that judah one of his brothers looked up and he saw a group of ishmaelites coming towards him and he said what good is it if we just kill this brother of ours how about we make some money let's sell him and that's what they did they sold him to the Ishmaelites who were on their way to Egypt. Listen. In their eyes, they thought that they're doing something out of their own strength. But remember, it didn't matter if Joseph was in that pit. All things were literally working together for good. Because in this low season, God was still working things together. Here now, when we get to Genesis 39 verse 2, what does it say? The Lord, he was sold, just let me explain a little bit. He was sold in Egypt, not to just anyone, not to just anyone. He was sold to Potiphar, 
Potiphar was the captain of the guard. See how God orchestrates your life, even in that season that feels like, why God, why me? There is purpose in everything. Sometimes you need to be aware that sometimes something that looks like a setback might actually be a setup by God to catapult you into where he wants you to be. Amen? Hallelujah. So Genesis 39 verse 2, it says the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and as he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. Continue. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, continue, Joseph found favor in, the, in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of all his household and he entrusted him to his care, everything he owned. Listen, when you're following God's way, it doesn't matter what season you're in. Other people will be able to see the favor of God on you. Just they will see it because God is with you in every single season. And now can you imagine he's in Potiphar's house, is in charge of everything. Obviously the enemy is not happy. Guess what happens? Joseph, very handsome young man, Potiphar's wife actually likes him. And he, she starts pursuing him and wants to sleep with him. And Joseph is a man of right standing. And he says, na, 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 na. And she keeps pursuing him until eventually she grabs him. He leaves his coat and flees out of the house. But she lies. And eventually, if you read the story, you find that Joseph was thrown into prison. Do you see what's happening he was now in Potiphar's house. He's in charge of everything. The next minute he's in a low season, he's in jail. And you would think in this jail that now the, it's over, things are just going to crumble. But no, 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 no. Not with the God that we serve. Not with God. Hallelujah. I say not with God. With God, it doesn't matter what season you're going through. He gets the glory. Because the favor of God, it doesn't leave you just because your season is changing. Listen, seasons are unpredictable. Honestly, like my husband was telling me, next week, one day is 19, the next day it's 33 degrees. It's unreliable. But with God, he is consistent. He is faithful. He has said it. He will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. It doesn't matter if you're in the prison or in the palace. God is the same. He is consistent. Thank God he is consistent. Amen? 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 Now, because of time, I will read this next part because it was so amazing. While he was in prison, again, it says, listen to this. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Imagine, in jail. He's still flourishing. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those who were held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph. Imagine, what type of favor is this? That you as a child of God, that is how your life should be. Whether you're in a low season or a high season, the hand of God is with you. All things work together for good. I said all things work together for good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible continues to say, that while he was in prison, this cupbearer and a baker, I don't know what they did to their master, but they got thrown into prison. And guess who was put in charge of them? Joseph. Yes, yeah, see how God, he's such a master planner. And it says that the cupbearer and the baker, they had a dream. And it's amazing. I like what Joseph said. In Genesis 40, verse 6, it says, When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. 
So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? They said, we both had dreams. They answered, but there was no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not all interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. Listen to that. He literally gave glory back to God. He gave glory back to God. And because of that, he was able to interpret the dreams. And Joseph, it's funny, that after this, he told, he told the Kabera in verse 14, he says, but when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in the dungeon. You know what interesting thing happened? The cup bearer, whatever Joseph said, it came to pass. Did he remember him? He didn't remember him. For me, what I learned is your life is not in the hands of a man. Your life is in the hands of the king of kings and the lord of lords. <laughs> Things don't happen on your time, in your time, because of what you want. Everything happens in God's timing for a reason. The Bible says that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. And so the Bible goes on to say that Joseph actually stayed in prison two more years. Two. Yeah. And it says that at this time, guess who has the dream now? Pharaoh. See how God was setting him up? God had to wait two more years, give him a dream. And Pharaoh had the dream, and it goes on, and Joseph um, interprets this dream. And the Bible says that at the end of this, Pharaoh literally, he says, I see. I see. I'll just read it quickly because of time. He says, Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all these things known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of the palace and all my people are to submit by your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. And the Bible says he was 30. Which means for the last 12 years, since 17 until 30, God was working on his character. God was working on his leadership skills. Yeah, for him to be in the palace. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. The Bible is full of story after story. I don't have time to go through it. In the book of Acts, it said Paul and Silas actually delivered a slave girl. She had a demon. And the Romans were not happy. And they threw them into prison after they flogged them. And the Bible says God... What did we call him? He's omnipotent, the all-powerful God. The Bible says that and at midnight, the doors swung open and the prison guard was so afraid and he literally came and said, Paul, what do I need to do to get saved? That is how your life should be. That in everything, all things should literally work together for good. Everything, all things working together for the good of them that love God. Hallelujah. If you're here and you're in a season that isn't looking favorable in your eyes, I want you to stop focusing on that season. Begin to lift your eyes up to the one who is able. He is able. I said he is able. He is able to take you through that season with your head lifted up because God has never changed. Your seasons will change, but God is consistent. He is a holy God. He is a holy God. He is a faithful God. He is majestic. There is no one like him. There is none before him. There is none after him. Hallelujah. He is God all by himself. Hallelujah.
There is no one, no one, no one, no one who can come close to God. Hallelujah. Your situation is not too difficult for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want us all to rise to our feet at this moment as I read this scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know what season you're in. It could be high season, low season, medium season, whatever season. One thing I do know is that God will never leave you, neither he will he ever forsake you. He is with you in your storm. He is with you in your good times. He is with you in your hard times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Listen, listen, listen. It says, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Hallelujah. Is there anyone in this house that says, I love the Lord? Is there anyone who knows that you love King Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He died on this cross for you and for me so that you are set free. Hallelujah. Psalms 91 says, Though 10,000 may fall at your side, another thousand on the other side, no harm will come near you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the steps of the righteous, they are ordered by God. Though they stumble, they will not be utterly cast down because he will uphold him with your, his righteous right hand. Hallelujah. 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 Stretch your hands to Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Church, you serve a faithful God. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. He is omniscient, all-knowing. Hallelujah. He sees everything. He knows your pain. He knows your season. And in all things, God works it all together for good. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you have your hands are lifted up, I just want you to take a moment. This is just a moment between you and your creator. Hallelujah. I want you to listen to his voice. If you think God doesn't speak, he speaks. He speaks. He's speaking to your heart right now. I want you to be honest with him. If you have been seeing him from the wrong lens and seeing that the issue is bigger than him, I'm here to tell you that there is nothing that is impossible for God. There is nothing, nothing. There's no doctor's report that is bigger than God. There is no situation that is bigger than God. Nothing is impossible for God. And so with hands lifted up, I want you to surrender to him. Surrender to him. Hallelujah. Invite him in that situation. That situation which you have been praying for, for so long. And you feel like, I can't pray about this anymore. Leave it at his feet. Surrender. Even that thing, that one that is so difficult, that as well will work together for good because you love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus, for every person who have their hands lifted up, my Father, as an act of surrender. Lord, we come to you today saying, we surrender, Lord. 
We surrender our seasons of our lives to you, Jesus. You were able to do the impossible. You were able to open doors that have been closed. Hallelujah. You were able to answer prayers of salvation of people we have been praying for for years after years. Father God, there is nothing that is impossible with you. Thank you, Father God, that your word says, hallelujah, that no eye has seen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into our minds what you have prepared for those that love you. Hallelujah. And so, Father God, at this moment, we just say, come and take over our lives. Come and be in charge of our seasons. May there be favor in our lives. Hallelujah. May there be victory in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, my Father. We thank you, God, because you have said it. And you know that your word, you will have to perform it. We thank you for who you are, God. Hallelujah. Let's just give him praise right now. Give him glory. Hallelujah. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of all glory. He is worthy of all honor. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank you, God, because you deserve it. He deserves all glory. He deserves all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed today's word. If you'd like to know more about what we believe, who Jesus is and how you can know him too, head to our website, voicetothenations.com.au. And if you'd like some prayer, you can also head to our website, voicetothenations.com.au forward slash prayer requests. Have an amazing day and we hope you tune in again soon.